Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to find out what it's like to be a horticulturalist at the Memphis Zoo. And we'll give you some tips to help head off the spring insect invasion. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. So stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Ms. Connie Shepard. Ms. Connie is the horticulture manager at the Memphis Zoo. And Mr. D is here. Howdy. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Here's our first viewer question, Mr. D. And it's from Matt. And it says, this pile of branches has developed over the course of several months at the base of my oak tree. They all appear to have been chewed off and they fail in this one spot, as you see on the screen. Is this insect activity or something else? What do you think? Because we actually had a little discussion about this. So. Yeah, it's weird. And we have the branches right here. It's, a, it's very weird. It you is. Know, when I first saw the question, I thought maybe twig girdler yeah, or something like that. Yeah, that's what I like thought that. initially. But if you look at the, uh, the cut, it clearly was chewed off by sharp teeth, a rodent type mm -hmm. probably, which leads me to believe that we have squirrels or raccoons or something like that that uh, could be... Uh, could be doing that. I don't see how it got so neatly piled at the yeah, base of the tree. Yeah, you saw that? Yeah, just right at the base. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, I mean, look at that. It's, it's neatly piled. Yeah. Uh, Weird. And, and you know, uh, you see these blown, blown out of trees often during the wintertime. Uh, these uh, critters build nests up in trees, and, mm -hmm. and as you get the, the strong winds in the wintertime, these nests sometimes come apart and blow down. And, uh, and then also uh, we have uh, squirrels that eat bark, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, the acorn supply is, is <laughs> kind of reduced, you know, in, in the late part of winter, there's not a lot for them to eat. And, uh, you know, maybe, may, I just think there's some large rodent type critter up in too. that tree that's chewing these things off and, and uh, either, either a raccoon or a squirrel or something along those lines. And, and it's not insect, clear, clear, yeah, clearly not, not insect. Definitely and, not insect. Uh, uh, it's Any thoughts about that, Ms. Connie? Have you seen anything like that before? I, we usually see piles of li limbs all around the zoo, and all we do is we just pick them up and move them, and then they create even more mess. So <laughs> it's a constant <laughs> battle of yeah. pick up and clean up after the squirrels, yeah. our favorite wildlife that we have. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe maybe put a camera up. Put a camera out there and point it up into the tree, and maybe we can figure out what's doing that. The fact that he hadn't seen anything tells me that it might be a nocturnal. Critter, which again, raccoon, or, you know. All right, it could be. I don't know. It's a CSI moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and right now we're kind of stumped. Right. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Connie, we're happy to have you here today. Thank you for okay. having me. First thing first, describe what is zoo horticulture? What is that? Well, it's really nothing very grand. Okay. It's, it's right. just gardening, but okay. on a bigger scale, our focus is on animals. We also set the stage for them because you really wouldn't want to go to a zoo and see just a blank canvas. Okay. Then we also work in the public areas, um, making them lush and green and beautiful. So that way we enhance the garden, uh, our guests visit. And last but not least, we garden for our staff. Uh -huh. um, our plant material is chosen for its hardiness because we've got a lot of traffic from both the animals and our uh, people, guests, staff, and et cetera. So it, it's got to withstand a lot of use. Okay. Yeah. Now, what are some of the projects that y'all are currently working on there at the zoo? Um, our biggest one that we're working on right now is um, we are laying sod in cat country. Oh, in cat country. Uh -oh. Cat country. It, it's, um, we're, Neat. 
yeah, about 20 years ago, they opened it up about this time. So we have 44 pallets of Bermuda that we oh, have so been Bermuda. laying out. Okay. And yeah, I chose that because it's drought tolerant. Okay. And most of the um, varieties that we've chosen are shade okay. varieties. So we're hoping that that will do well. The sod will provide a really nice textural experience okay. for the cats as they are out on exhibit. And uh, you'll <laughs> see them, uh, the, especially the pumas apparently are just gnawing and, and playing with it and they're rubbing on it. So it gives them um, some enrichment while they're right. out. And that also enhances our guest visit. And uh, also you'll notice in the upper planters, we've cleaned those out and there it's an evergreen honeysuckle, Lanicera, Zipperviron's major wheeler. So okay. we're hoping that uh, that will bring some color in the area. Add um, some food for the wildlife, the hummingbirds and butterflies yes. that come through. So. We, we try and give everything a double duty, so that way it's well worth coming to the zoo. Pretty neat. So yeah. there you go. There's a use for Bermuda side. Exactly. How about that? Exactly. That's for the cats. <laughs> it probably yeah. gives the cats some entertainment to chase the sod layers around out there too, doesn't it? No, they're all off exhibit while we are in, out there laying the oh, sod. But we, oh. we do see them as we're going in and out. Okay. And uh, we try not to have too much interaction with them because oh. they're not happy that we are there okay. interfering with their daily life. They're expecting to be out, but instead they're inside. So. Wow. I bet you double check <laughs> cool. those latches, don't you? I, I don't have to. That is the keeper responsibility. Okay. So, <laughs> so that's I'm, done. Good I'm deal. quite happy for that. Okay, so what's a typical horticulture day like at the zoo? Um, we don't normally have typical days okay. because typical days. they're right. outstanding. We get to work at our Memphis Zoo. Because we garden, we try and do this unobtrusively so that way the guests still get to have access to all the areas mm. and they'll see us with our garden gloves and hats and everything. But um, we weed, we water, we okay. deadhead, um, design beds, work in our greenhouses, mow, anything that you normally do yeah. in, at home, we do it there. There's 55 acres, so wow. we're somewhere throughout the zoo every day. And we do that seven days a week. And uh, I feel very blessed that I do have Good. this position and I get to garden and share that with everyone who comes to the zoo. Good, and we're glad you're here sharing that. Because you. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't know there was a horticulturalist on staff at the zoo. So yeah. that's why I want to have you on here so people Thank can you. see that. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Well, let me ask you this. How many people assist you in your department? I have 14, oh, including 14. myself. Okay. Um, we also, um, on occasion have volunteers, so this is my plug for volunteers. Okay. <laughs> we are happy to have volunteers. Okay. Any kind of hands, um, you don't have to have experience. We will train on the job and uh, we'll take you any time, day, throughout the day. You're, we're very happy to have volunteers. Okay, very wow. Happy. So you pretty much work every day, yes, seven sir. days a week? Seven days a week, yeah. Wow. I don't, I work, I try and work my five days, but okay, you um, there are our staff is set up where we work Sunday through Thursday okay. and then Tuesday through Saturday. So it covers the whole the whole week. Okay. So we're split in that respect. Okay. Let's hope that you get some volunteers out there to help you out. <laughs> okay. What are some of the other areas in the zoo that you do work on? Um, we have both public and private areas. Okay. Um, the a majority of the public areas are gardens that have annuals, perennials, shrubs, okay. trees, and that kind of stuff. Um, I say we always work on the tall, tall trees to the itty bitty blades of grass. <laughs> we also have 6,000 square feet of greenhouse space um, in wow. a nearby area that provide us with all the plant material that we use. Okay. So, yeah, we're very busy. <laughs> always yeah, yeah, it sounds always like busy. It. Sounds always. like it. Uh, now, what are your goals for the zoo? Um, I am wanting to do a soil test. Uh -huh. Hasn't been done in a while. Right. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is I would like to create a plant database beginning okay. with my trees. And I'm also in the process of incorporating more perennial color okay. in all of our bed design. And uh, this way we encourage gardeners when they come visit, they can garden the same way at sure. the, their home as well as, um, as we do up there at the same time. Sounds so neat. Gardening for animals and people. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> and before we let you go, look, I understand that you used to be an extension agent. Yes, I worked in Louisiana in ah. the Jefferson Parish okay. as a county agent. Okay, and for the people, Jefferson Parish is? Um, right next to New Orleans. Right next to right New Orleans. Right next to New Orleans. How'd you like it? I loved it. I, I lived there for 20 years, and um, I miss it, but I'm happy to call Memphis my home now. Good deal. 
extension A. So, Mr. Day, we, we got to make sure that our information is correct now. We're right. Trying right. to get on yeah, us. I'm double yeah, checking we're doing my notes just here. fine. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure just, we're getting this right. You're doing right. just fine. Okay. Thank you for being here, Ms. Connie. Thank Appreciate you. that. Appreciate it. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Mr. D, spring insect invasion. The time has come. They're here. They're ready to come out. Yeah, and it's almost like the summer invasion because <laughs> we went from winter to, to summer or spring so fast. Uh, but I, you know, personally, I've seen ticks that are out there and I've seen uh, uh, roaches, uh, some of the oh. outside roaches, the uh. uh, large American cockroach and the Oriental roaches that live outside. Uh, the, the roaches that live outside are, are coming into the garages and, and getting in your barbecue grills and things like that. <laughs> uh, mosquitoes are going to be here, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. it, I think they have like two or three days of Real warm quick. weather and mm -hmm. and and, and um, so. Uh, I guess we can, and spiders, you know, yeah. they're coming in. Of course, spiders, for the most part, are, are beneficial as far as insect control, and, you know, you might want to keep that in mind before you start putting, trying to kill spiders that yeah. are out there. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, roaches, let's talk about roaches. Okay. Crickets, some people don't like crickets in their homes. Uh, <laughs> you know, crickets are, that's supposed to be good luck if you have a cricket you know, making on your hearth. Isn't that right? Isn't that good luck? Uh, but crickets and, and roaches are kind of related to each, order, each other. They used to be in the insect order, uh, I think, uh, uh, Orthoptera. And I think roaches, they've created a new order for, for roaches now, and, and they're in a different oh, insect wow. order. But uh, basically, if you're using sprays, the same sprays will kill crickets that kill roaches and, and it's basically the beta cyfluthrin RTU and lambda cyhalothrin RTU, both of those yeah. products will kill cr crickets and roaches. Uh, uh, roaches also have a bindle, Bengal gold roach spray and for roaches there are many, many baits that you yeah. can use and if you use baits and bait stations don't apply your contact insecticides around the bait stations because that will repel the roaches okay. from, uh, from uh, uh, your bait stations. But the combat yeah. uh, source kill um, uh, bait stations, uh, RAID has uh, bait <laughs> stations. There are bait stations for little roaches, which are the water bugs, <laughs> we call them, the German cockroaches and the banded cockroaches. And then there are bait stations for the large cockroaches. So you may want to get a bait station for large roaches and a bait <laughs> station small. for little ones, depending on what you've got. All right. uh, it's a good idea to, uh, inside to lightly dust the voids with insecticidal dust that contain boric acids. Those, those work well for, for roaches. But uh, that, that pretty well ha takes care of roaches and crickets now. I jotted down here mosquitoes. Uh, yeah, because they're already out there buzzing out there. around. They are. And we've had a lot of rainfall, you know, too. Right. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're out there. And, and as far as mosquito control is concerned, uh, if you have standing water yeah. with, that you want, such as, uh, you know, ornamental pools or, or, you know, in the hardscape mm -hmm. situation or bird baths and things like that, it's a good idea to use the uh, BT, the mm -hmm. mosquito BT. Uh, if you're water is large enough there, it's mosquito fish. You know, if you have enough water in a large enough pool, the little mosquito fish will also eat the insect, okay. uh, the, the larvae of the mosquitoes. But uh, uh, this is Bacillus thuringiensis israeliensis is the BT for mosquitoes. Uh, also called mosquito bits and mosquito dunks. Yeah. Uh, that's what, what they're also called. Yeah. Uh, there are insect growth regulators that contain methoprene that do a good job uh, for to control mosquitoes, torpedo. Um, if you're having a picnic or something like that outside, the outside foggers, aerosol foggers will possibly give you some relief if there's not a lot of wind. If there's a lot of yep. wind, it blows the treated air over to your neighbors <laughs> and the untreated air onto your property. Right. Uh, but but make sure, you know, go around and make sure you don't have water standing in areas that you don't want water standing in. 
spare ti old tires. Yeah. You know, if you've got a pile of old tires back in the corner somewhere, uh, they're notorious for holding water mm -hmm. and it'd be a great place for mosquitoes to breed. Uh, and it, you know, old pots. If you just yeah. have pots laying yeah. out there that you're not using, yeah, it doesn't like yeah. three days. You know, yeah. the, you know, the mosquitoes will start coming out of there. So uh, that's that's pretty well covered mosquitoes. Let's see what I've got. Ticks. Ah. Rocky Mountain spotted fever. I saw Miss Connie's shoulder go yeah, up. Oh, she's not, like ticks. <laughs> oh no. They're not my favorite. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> and you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of ticks. Okay. Around our yard, but it's because we had chickens. Mm -hmm. And the chickens were always out there picking around, I, and I figured out that that's what they were picking around eating. They were eating ticks. ticks. They, ah. they, they were eating all the ticks, but we've got them now. And, um, you know, if you're a turkey hunter, uh, you know, you're going out this time of the year out in the woods, you better, you better use insect repellent and, and, and probably one that uses DEET. Research yeah. has indicated that, mm -hmm. that uh, the DEET insect repellents that have like only 15% DEET are just as effective and even more effective than the ones that have 45, 50, or 60% DEET. So it's a good idea to, to use an insect repellent and, and the ones that uh, have DEET uh, seem to work the best. And, uh, and also for your clothes, your boots, and things like that, use some of the pyrethrin mm -hmm. you know, insecticides that mm -hmm. will actually kill the ticks when they get on there. Uh, don't apply those to your skin sure. you know, make sure you don't put them on your on your skin but right. but as far as your equipment your clothes uh, your boots your vest and things like that you can you can do that wow. but uh, let's see here uh, as far as your pets are concerned uh, I would pay attention to what the veterinarian says uh, there are several products that you can use uh, that you can put on pets mm -hmm. dogs and cats uh, uh, some are uh, uh, systemic type natures that when a tick feeds on them, it will kill the tick. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the uh, pyrethrins, uh, the same ones we mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, will we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do the trick for ticks also. That's, just be ready. Wow, gotta be ready. Be and, and quickly, Ms. Connie, how do y'all deal with insects at the zoo? Well, we also work on removing all the standing water we go mm -hmm. around in all the different areas just to make sure and uh, turn everything to make sure that nothing is standing mostly because with the mosquitoes then that will uh, yeah, yeah. affect the birds and that's um, one of the things we w we try and make sure that doesn't happen we can't do a lot of spraying yeah. because of both um, public and sure. and the animals that's just not safe for sure. all of us to do so our job is to always make sure there's not too much standing water and uh, smack them. <laughs> smack them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, most important. Make All right. Them control. <laughs> yeah, got to get them under control. All right. Good information. Now here's our Q and A session. And Miss sure. Connie, <laughs> you know, extension agent, you just jump right on in okay. here now. That's right. right. We don't exactly cover right. it for us. Okay. okay. All right. Here's the first question. I heard Dale Skaggs talk about boxwood leaf miners. What are they, and how do you control their Mr. D? What do you think about that? Boxwood leaf Boxwood miners. Boxwood leaf miners. And we get more and more questions about that at the extension yeah. office. When you, uh, when you see boxwood leaf miner damage, mm -hmm. it's damage that occurred last season. Usually you have the brown blisters uh -huh. on the plant, and uh, that's damage that occurred, you know, in the, in the, the last season. Uh, let's see here. I've got to make sure I get this right because you probably know the answer to that. <laughs> it's uh, mostly, it's unsightly. Yeah, so just the best thing you do is just take your clean pruners and cut back where you, you see the leaf miner damage and it will regrow and regenerate and mm -hmm. then probably by the next year you'll be fine. There's, there are some that there you are can some spray. Products. Yeah. That's right. And then I'll, I'll toss those out there for you. I'll toss those out there. This month, Okay. You can spray uh, using seven carbaryl and dimethoate, mm -hmm. are three products that you can use during during the month of, month of April. Okay, and then uh, uh, earlier February through early April, you can use some of the systemic materials okay. such as uh, Merit uh, Marathon or Elect Electus SC. It's a new one on me. Uh, also, uh, Safari uh, Discus or a couple of other products that are labeled. April and May, Dimethoate, Orthene, Discus, Merit, Marathon, TriStar. After the month of May, 
That's pretty much it. You just, you know, you, yeah. you shouldn't have any problem. That's when the, the insect, is, the leaf miner is laying the egg on the plant and, and you have a little bitty larvae, mm -hmm. little larvae that, that hatches and it tunnels between the upper and lower leaf area, which when it's doing that during the growing season, that leaf continues to be green, but, but next year you'll see the, it turns brown. Yeah, it's kind of unique to see it too. I've seen a tunneling inside the, the leaf mm -hmm. tissue. And I know why uh, they, they heard Dale Skag say this because at the Dixon, it's full of boxwoods. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of boxwoods there at the Dixon, so I hope that answers his question. Not going to kill the plant, but it is. Unsightly. Yeah, just you know. doesn't look good aesthetically. Sure. <laughs> okay, here's the next question. How do I control lace bugs on my azaleas? And Ms. Cunningham, we get that question all the time. You spray horticulture oil twice a year. Horticulture oil is something that you can do. And now's the time to do that. Okay. And you, and you can use that out at the zoo? Yes, mm -hmm. and yeah. I do. Okay, there, I do. I do it in the spring and in the fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that way I've got coverage both both times of the year when um, most of them are fairly active. Okay. And there is a lot of lacewing damage currently on ours because we've not had a spray program. Okay. So I'm hoping in a, about five years to have a really beautiful so. set of azaleas. Yeah, because it makes the leaves just look all bronzed out. Modeled. Yeah, just, and just, just discolored. Exactly. Yeah. Good coverage. And I know Mr. D is probably going to cover that, but you got to get good coverage, not just on right. the top side of those leaves. But they're they're on the underside, underside of the leaves is where they are. They're yeah. not, you know, they're they're on the underside of the leaves is where the immatures are and uh, the adults for most part. But if the if the oil doesn't work for you, okay, uh, you can uh, use the systemics uh, such as uh, Safari, Merit, or Marathon, and even Granular Arena as an alternative to foliar spray. So you would be pouring it on the ground and, mm, and not okay. and and the plant will take it up and, and when the lace bugs feed on it it will kill them. Uh, and but you do that early in early, the year, okay. February, March. This is not the time to 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 uh, do that. Uh, April through October, uh, again, if you see if you have lace bug injury, the leaves would look like they're they're bleached out mm -hmm. and, and you'll see black lacquer like spots mm -hmm. on the underside of the leaves which is actually uh, lace bug fecal material. Ah. But uh, from April through October, dimethoate, orthene, discus, tempo, diazinon, electus SC, decathlon, merit, tempo SC, ultra marathon, flagship, Dursband, 50W Safari, Arena, and Acelaprin? Acelaprin. Yeah. And awesome. again, <laughs> being sure to use a spreader sticker, direct your spray to the under, you know, yes. make sure you get the underside of the leaves covered and that should solve the problem for you. All right, yeah, get the underside. Insects are smarter than you think. You think. Yeah. That's right. Go from the top to the bottom and just hide and wait till you get finished. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come back up to the top. Yeah. All right, here's the next question. Yeah, I know why they asked this question. Guess what this one is. Where can I buy those mold traps that Mr. D was talking about? <laughs> I got number five last week. <laughs> You know, ah, have so it's working for you, the traps. It is. Okay. Uh, for the first time, the choker type trap works for me. I've not, I've not had success with harpoon type traps, and I know of people who have had okay. a lot of success with the harpoon type traps. And uh, I think my molds are tougher, and I think they just <laughs> jerk the spear out yeah. of the back and go off. But the choker types, uh, you know, they're very, they're, it's bloodless and it's very quick. You know, a couple of minutes, they, they're, they're, they're gone. Um, I got mine at Tractor Supply. Okay. I think any, any. Hardware store, Ace Hardware Ace, stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe even the Home Depots, the Lowe's. I don't. Walmart. They, they. You should be able to get them anywhere. And then also you could go online and, and get them a lot. But the choker type traps work best for me. Uh, okay. And it's. And uh, you have proof. You I said have it's proof. Working. I have proof. And and uh, the placement of the traps again is the most important. You can find if you find a long run. A real long run that doesn't have any branching off to the sides, that's a good place to put it. Okay. And if you don't catch one in a half a day, take it, move it somewhere else. Right. But if you can find a long run, I've been successful in putting it in the middle of that long run, and um, usually within an hour or two, you can get something. You got him. Mm -hmm. Miss Cunny, I got to ask you moles at the zoo? Um, they're enrichment for the animals. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. Enrichment for the animals. Yeah. If, right. they, uh, if they occur in an exhibit, then uh, they're, they're fair game. Any, mm -hmm. Anything that comes into an exhibit are, is truly fair game. That includes, <laughs> there you have it. That includes two-legged things. Yes, <laughs> that's very true. Oh, wow. So how about that? Mm -hmm. Real quickly, last question. When should I put down crabgrass preventer? You're the weed killer, fella. I can handle you that. You tell me, yeah. It's best to put it down late February, early March. Okay. Most of those products have residual activity. 
it may say on that label 60 days, 90 days, or 120 days. So whenever you put it down early in the spring, late February, uh, uh, late February, early March, look on it, go to your calendar. I put it down this day, count out 60 days, 90 days, or 120 days, whatever that residual activity is, and you'll be fine. Now, now if you've missed that, Quinn Clorac? If you miss it, then Quinn Clorac mm -hmm. is going to be your replacement for the MSMA to control your uh, crabgrass. Right. right. But this is, uh, you know, pre-merge. Right. So the Quinn Clorac is going to be post. Right. <laughs> all right. There you have it. Excellent. Okay. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can watch past episodes of The Family Plot online. Just go to WKNO.org and click on KNO Tonight. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Chris Cooper, and be sure to join us next time for the family plot, gardening in the Mid South. Be safe. Production funding for the family plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.